God without all nature and creature, the uninformed word in Trinity without all nature, the eternal unity or oneness deeper than any thought can reach, Alpha and Omega, the eternal beginning and eternal end, the first and the last, the great softness, meekness, stillness, nothing and all, eternal liberty, abyss, without ground, time, and place. The still eternity, the stereo magnum without nature, chaos, the mirror of wonders, or wonderful eye of eternity, the first temperature, or temperature in nothingness, a calm, serene habitation, but without all luster and glory, the trinity, unmanifest, or rather, the triune, unsearchable being, which cannot be an object of any created understanding. The three first, Sal, Sulfur, and Mercury, the triangle in nature, the inferior, restless part of nature, the properties of darkness, the root of fire, the will of nature, the three properties on the left hand, appropriable in a sense to Father, Son, and Spirit, the hellish world, if in a creature divorced from the three on the right, opposite to what in the light world is called virgin wisdom. The fourth property of eternal nature, the magic fire, the fire world, the first principle, the generation of the cross, the strength, might, and power of eternal nature, the abyss or eternal liberties opening in the dark world, breaking and consuming all the strong attraction darkness, the distinguishing mark standing in the mist between three and three, looking with the first terrible crack made in the first gross and rough hardness into the dark world, and with the second joyful crack made in the second soft watery concretive hardness into the light world, and giving unto each what it is capable of, namely might, strength, terror, unto the former, but light, splendor, luster, and glory unto the latter. The three exalted, tinctured, or transmuted properties on the right hand, the kingdom of love, light, and glory, the second principle, the second temperature, or temperature in substantiality, the trinity manifested, which only now can be an object of a created understanding, this wisdom, tincture. The four first figures were, in some manner, to show the generation of eternal nature, which has a beginning without beginning, and an end without end. The fifth represents now that this great royal residence, or divine habitation of glory, of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, was replenished at once with innumerable inhabitants, all glorious flames of fire, all children of God, and all ministering spirits, divided in three hierarchies according to the holy number three. But we know the names only of two of them, which are Michael and Uriel, because only these two, with all their hosts, kept their habitation in the light. Here now, one of those three hierarchs, even the most glorious of them, because he was the created representative of God the Son, commits high treason, revolts, lets his dark, proud will spirit, and a false magi, without any occasion given him from without, out of his own center fly up on high above God and all the host of heaven, to be himself all in all. But he is resisted and precipitated down and falls through the fire into eternal darkness, in which he is a mighty prince over his own legions, but in reality a poor prisoner, and an infamous executioner of the wrath of God, 
and may now well be reproached and asked, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? To which question a profound, prolix, distinct, most particular, and circumstantial answer is given in the Aurora to his eternal shame and confusion, which he had hid and covered from the beginning of the world. When Lucifer by his rebellion had brought the whole extent of his kingdom into such a desolate condition that it was, as Moses describes it, without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, that whole region was justly taken away from under his dominion, and transformed into such another meaner and temporary condition that it could no more be of any use to him. And when this was fully settled in six days' time, according to the six active spirits of eternal nature, so that it wanted nothing more but a prince and ruler, instead of him who had forsaken his habitation in the light, Adam was created in the image and likeness of God, an epitome or compendium of the whole universe, by the verbum fiat, which was the eternal word in conjunction with the first astringent fountain spirit of eternal nature. This Adam, though he was indeed created in a state of innocence, purity, integrity, and perfection, could not yet stand on that top of perfection which he was designed for, and would have been drawn up into, if he had stood his trial, for which there was an absolute necessity. Three things there were that laid a claim to Adam, and though they stood within him in an equal temperature, yet did they not so without him, for Lucifer had made a breach. These three things were, above him, Sophia, called his companion, and the wife of his youth, Satan, that uncreated dark root in the beginningless beginning of eternal nature, and the spirit of this world. And herein lies the ground of the necessity of Adam's temptation. Here now is poor Adam actually fallen away from all his former happiness and glory, and has lost whatsoever was good and desirable both in himself and round about him. He lies as dead on the outermost borders of the spirit of this world. Sophia has forsaken him, or rather he, having dealt treacherously, has forsaken her, and the holy band of the marriage covenant that was between them is dissolved. He is all over dark, and lies even under the earth over which he was to rule. All the stars shoot their influences upon him, of which the very best are but death and poison to that life for which he was created. And nothing less could he expect but that every moment he should be quite drawn down and swallowed up in the belly of Satan. Here, Adam, by that word of grace treasured up in his heart, whose name is Jesus, is raised again so far that he can stand above the earthly globe upon the basis of a fiery triangle, which is an excellent emblem of his own soul. And the holy name Jesus stands above him upon the top of a watery triangle. And these two triangles, which in Adam's fall were divorced from each other, do now touch each other again, though but in one point that the soul's desire may draw down into itself the watery triangle and the holy name may draw up into itself more and more the fiery triangle till these two make up a complete symbol, the most significant character in all the universe. For only then the work of regeneration and reunion with Sophia, here Adam, in the same place as before, appears again, but in union with Christ, which is to be referred to the person of Jesus Christ, or of the second Adam in our humanity upon earth, and is to show us the absolute necessity of his holy incarnation, and an immaculate sacrifice for all mankind, without which the great work of our regeneration and reunion with Sophia could not have been wrought out to perfection. 
in his incarnation, he brought the most significant character, which the first Adam had lost into the humanity again, but first in his own human person, although it could not be visible in him from without, whilst he was upon earth a man like unto us in all things, sins accepted, and therefore he, and even he alone, was able to sufficient. From the time in which the breaker prophesied of by Micah was come up before us, the gate stood open, that the first Adam's children would follow him and enter into paradise, which could not be done by any soul before that time. Holy souls, both before and after the deluge, that lived according to the dictates of the word treasured up in their hearts, could in their departure from this world go so far as to the gate of paradise, but entrance could not be had by any one till the firstborn from the dead was entered in his own person. Yet it is there still a vast difference between souls and their departure from this world, and this difference wholly depends upon the real state and condition of the significant character, which was spoken of before for those souls when the third hierarchy, which Lucifer destroyed and depopulated, shall be completely filled again with inhabitants from the children of Adam, good and evil shall be separated, time shall be no more, and God shall be all in all. This third hierarchy, which, for good reasons, was always hitherto represented as inferior to those of Michael and Uriel, is now here exalted again above them in the supremest place for the hierarch Jesus Christ being the brightness of God the Father's glory and the express image of his person excels all the angels and has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they who are all to worship him and to none of whom he ever said as he did to him sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool